Thanks, guys and girls. Uh, thank you for coming and to this talk. Um, and let's begin. My name is Dmitry Sneshkov. Um, I am with uh, IBM X4 Shred. Um, I do security testing, code hacking, um, and tool hacking. So this talk is really about uh, safer communication across content proxies with the use of webhook technologies. We're going to walk through the um, escape from hostile, monitored, and censored networks uh, through a proxy. Proxy is going to be our target. Uh, the content proxy is going to be our target. And we're going to get out to the external host under your control. That may be your CNC. The purpose is for command execution um, on external and internal hosts, content exfiltration, and infiltration. So the audience is. Uh, is red teamers and pen testers. That's going to be from offensive standpoint, but obviously defense is welcome, as well as um, privacy advocates. And there will be cases for um, for that. So anyone who is interested in um, covert communication out of networks, are welcome. So before we get into the technical details, we have to uh, set some stage for the goals of our talk and uh, answer the question why we're doing this. So we need to meet the defense at their map of the world as a red teamer. Uh, we need to seek alternative means of effective outbound communication and we're going to try to uh, minimize our discoverability. We're going to go into why we need to do this a little later. But also we also want to live off the land and uh, use opportunities presented to us by organizations. The tactical goals uh, would be to achieve communication between hostile networks and external hosts and avoid detection, avoid censorship um, of the intermediate content proxy. And then the technical, uh, technical mechanisms of what we're going to do is we are going to discover HTTP webhooks. Technology, we are going to use the webhooks to achieve such goals and uh, at the end we're, we're going to showcase a tool that is going to automate things like this. To set the stage for players, you know, to, the, to, our, um, to our discussion is that we're going to have um, offense, defense, obviously the content pro proxy, command and control, concept of C2 broker, and internal and external party. So the problem of communication from restricted networks, it's not so much a cat and mouse game, but it's really more like um, like a parable about six blind blue man in this case and the red elephant. So the parable goes as follows, right? If you, if you know somebody spotted an animal in the village, they do not know what that animal is and the blind man said, well, let's discover uh, this animal by touch. Somebody touched um, a tail and said it's a rope, you know, a, a leg is a pillar. Uh, trunk of the body is a wall, fan, and so on and so forth. So we are on the red team, we are on the inside, and we're being discovered by probes. So from the blue perspective, blue team perspective, the sensory perception of what we're doing is, um, is really to understand how blind we are, what is this unknown entity, and can we detect their capabilities without revealing our detection mechanisms. So really, we are waiting from the blue team perspective whether the unknown moves and how that works, right? It's passive, it works for us, and we're going to sit tight and look for it. But the red team perspective is different. The elephant, the red team elephant, <laughs> has to know what that environment really is. What is this unknown environment? What can they do to me? You know, how many defenses, where, how? Um, so the wish for the red elephant is to stay put and to understand what's going on, but unfortunately the reality is that the red team has to move first. And when what happens, it's, it's a game of uh, first move, but unfortunately first move may kill, right? If you're in uh, quiet environments or supervised environments, moving through proxy, moving content through proxy is, is going to be uh, very challenging sometimes. So the outcomes for the elephant are threefold. The first is the unsafe negative outcome. The second is safe negative outcome. And the third is safe positive outcome. Let's go through that. The unsafe negative outcome is, is pretty, um, pretty bad. You're being caught, you're done, and you're out. The safe negative outcome really is, um, 
is about discovering the sensors, the blind man sensors, what they are prior to your first move or very shortly while maintaining stealth. Um, so in our talk we're going to concentrate um, on the environment where you do not have any kind of capability for exfiltration uh, over uh, covert channels like ICMP, DNS, um, you know, any kind of connectivity outside except for the uh, approved content proxy. So unfortunately if you're constrained to this environment where you have just the content proxy that uh, allows you to move out, um, you're not achieving your goals but you're still alive, which is great. You buy time to come up with things that you need to, uh, to do in this environment. So the safe positive outcome from your, uh, your move is, well, um, you literally try to, uh, uh, try to play towards what is being discovered. Um, what are the rules? Can you be an approved tool? Can you, be, uh, can you communicate over safe protocol? Is there, an abort, uh, is there an approved port that you can use to, to do your, uh, to your job? Are you in the safe traffic? So um, the blue team says my mechanisms really are okay because I do have draconian content proxy and I do have a whitelist. So I'm just checking for known bad. It's pretty good, nice, right? But so the last two outcomes, the safe uh, positive and safe negative, um, are good, but we're still not achieving our goal. Uh, the one thing that both blue and red team need to understand that the map that they've built by using their sensory perception is not the territory, territory right? So we've all now used our known methods of classification of the um, of either parties, but we also may be overly paranoid of their capabilities or dismissive enough of their capabilities to not being able to achieve our goals. So both build static map of the world, but the map is not completely true all the time. So f this talk is from a red team perspective. So what red needs to do is to consistently break the static map of the defense and their own. And we need to meet the blue, meet the b blue team at their map of the world, the concept of pacing and leading them. How it's achieved in the wild, it's mimicry. You're um, trying to uh, achieve external resemblance with something that is known, right? It's a very powerful concept and um, we're going to try to do this by maybe picking on development uh, or development tools. So the levels of mimicry that is achieved for Red is that we need to be uh, under known and approved uh, business need role or process. We need to blend into traffic and protocol that is approved by Blue. And so we need to work through the good tools and valid rules. We're going to ride on the fact that trust detection mechanisms are static and their map of the world is sort of built. So pacing and leading as communication pattern overall is just a verifiable statement, several of them, followed by a positive suggestion, a lead. We're going to mimic and follow the developer process and we're going to code our red tools in the presence of a developer achieving stealth. We're going to make the blue team believe that we are the developer and because you trust the developer, you should trust us. So it's all good and well. This is all general, but how do we really achieve this? Uh, tight content proxy is all you have to work with. Well, let's step back a little bit and talk about the technology that we're going to use to achieve our goal, uh, webhooks. Webhooks is a new technology for asynchronous web responses. It is normally built, it's historically built for notification services. It's easy to implement, it is low maintenance, and it works over HTTP, and therefore we can use it for our content proxy. The classic server request response polling loop um, for the web server is that we normally submit a request for processing to a web server. The server begins executing our request and then we keep polling the, the server asking, well, are we there yet? Five times, ten times, however many times we need to get the response from that server. So the server naturally gets annoyed, meaning that there are con content switches, there are resource consumption. Um, depending uh, on the case, there may be even a throttling mechanism that says you guys cannot do that. So um, when the server has the result for us, we just grab it and we you know, disengage from that communication. Unfortunately, the web, for the web server or 
uh, fortunately for the web server, web server came up with this uh, new idea that uh, don't ask me when I'm going to be done. Why don't you post a hook where I'm going to submit your uh, response to once I'm done and we can both go our merry way right at the outset of the request. So the client submits a request for processing to the server, the server begins executing, we're disengaging at this point and then we're listening for the response the server gives to us, we communicate asynchronously. How that's done from the uh, technical standpoint? Your client or you who are asking for responses, just give the server the URL with the action and a method to post to when the, uh, the server is done, right? So when this link is, um, is ready, it's being posted to. So who uses webhooks? Um, pretty much everybody right now who does coding uses webhooks. Continuous integration tools are prime um, examples of that. Uh, repositories that try to notify people of the check-ins, check-outs. Uh, communication and alerting mechanisms uh, uh, that um, companies use to notify them of certain events use them as well. Again, so safe negative outcome, right? We are sitting tight, we don't have any way to get out except for through uh, content proxy. How do we solve this? Well, what if we can find a site, a way to turn a site into a, a content broker, right, that uses webhooks to work through our content back and forth, unidirectional, single directional, maybe even real time, right? So then we're gonna drive data communication to the C2. And we're actually sticking to our um, main goal is meeting defense at their static map of the world. They've said they've created rules, we're working through the rules. So the C2 broker side operation is as follows. Um, it's a request across some site that is going to invoke a hook onto a third party. The third party is going to execute the request and come back with a response through the C2, um, C2 broker and then the client is going to pull that response off of the C2 broker site. Now the C2 brokers um, are not created equal. What we need for our needs is that it needs to be obviously public. It needs to be flexible so that webhooks can actually work through it. You can find a, uh, a website that is on the VIP list with proxies. Pretty much available um, and very, very useful, right? And it also needs to uh, blend into the business function of this specific organization. So again, who uses webhooks? Let's follow the developer. Continuous integration, code management, communication services, alerting. GitHub, github.com. It's used and popular, so that checks out. It's developer friendly, it has awesome webhook API. It has OPSEC features because it uses, it is pretty much trying to um, figure out the safe way for the clients to communicate, right? And so we're gonna write on this. It's TLS, the tokens, HMAC, all over HTTP. And obviously, last but not least, is the developers themselves drive the uh, adoption inside of their um, companies for GitHub. Both of, all of these is advantage for us. We're gonna use GitHub to open up issues and comments and use GitHub to achieve this transparency. So Octahook is a toolkit that is going to automate this. We're gonna use through the, uh, we're gonna use GitHub as our C2 broker to communicate to our C2 uh, machine on the outside. How that's done? Well, you create a, um, repository on GitHub, you register a payload URL, which is our webhook. We are, you know, we can do our secret as well as using the, uh, the tokens and we activate the hook. Once this done, we are watching for issues and comments. The two events that are being broadcasted every time something happens that, um, that we're interested in on GitHub and obviously that gets posted out to our C2 server agent or the internal agent or the external agent. And then the OPSEC, right? Uh, we writing, we're writing on GitHub's ability to create safe communication for us. We're using certificates to our advantage. So Octahook, a, Octahook agent um, and server, it's, it's the same thing, right? You come up on both sides the same way. It uses Git issues to communicate requests. It uses comments to 
um, to shuttle responses back. It's a straight YAML and JSON response, also feeding into uh, the model of keeping with the blue team and um, understanding what they're looking for and what they're not looking for. And um, essentially the way it looks like, we're gonna see a demo of it, but statically, it's a repo that has a bunch of, uh, a bunch of issues and comments on it. Nothing more, nothing less. So responses and requests are being moved uh, very transparently. Every agent on the inside or outside can post to GitHub under its own space. It's uh, every agent that comes up to communicate into this uh, um, swarm, right? Um, it, it has an ID. You can statically set it. And then everything that you shuttle back and forth gets stored under that ID. So this is all good and well, but we have to keep polling the issues and comments from the client side. Right, so we have to go to the CTO broker and said, "Well, we've executed the command. Is our response um, good? I mean, did we receive a response or, or not? That's not a big deal. We can get uh, get around GitHub throttling mechanism because we can check every second. Right? They're not. We're doing it manually. That's not a big deal. But can we really improve? Well, it turns out that webhooks can work both ways. And at GitHub, you can do 20 of those webhooks. So why not establish two-way communication from our client directly to the C2 over GitHub, over C2 broker? So now, what we have, uh, we have two webhooks. One goes to the client side, the other goes uh, to our C2, right? So we achieve real-time communication that way. And now we can play with roles. We can say, okay, well, on the inside, the server is going to, the agent is going to be the client. The server is going to be on the outside or we can flip the roles, right? Now, uh, as I mentioned before, the configuration for both client and the server, the agent roles on, si on, on both sides are pretty much the same except for the, the, um, um, the actual notion of a role, am I listening or am I executing or am I um, subscribing for request and I'm, um, I'm asking the, uh, the, the GitHub or C2 broker to do it for me. So when we go through the demo, we're gonna look at asynchronous unidirectional command execution. The first case, right, when we need to, we can get to, to our C2, but we still need to manually pull our issue or comment for, uh, for the state. Is it closed? Do you have any data output or not? The second is going to be uh, asynchronous bidirectional communication when we have both of the webhooks, one goes to the inside, the other goes to the outside. And then we're gonna see the asynchronous content delivery. So the two, two phases in this is a shell execution of commands on one side or the other, and the other is the content delivery. For example, for the red team, if you forgot your toolkit, you can go to your C2 through GitHub and bring it back on the inside. And then some features uh, that kind of you know, fit into this model of uh, Octahook configuration and logs. So first is going to be a shell and execution. Um, we're gonna take it from the perspective of a client. We're on the inside. This is a prompt for Octahook. And it's loaded, uh, the configuration is loaded off of the client.yml that lists all the GitHub tokens, uh, all the configuration that it needs to connect to the C2 under the account. What's happening right now, um, the client is executing ls command on the C2 over GitHub. Notice that there are no, uh, there is no response from that because this is the first method when we're going to GitHub and polling for resp uh, results. So we're checking on a specific issue that we know is open for our request. Uh, and see that it's, it's in a closed state, it's in OS execution, and now we're going to pull for it. We're gonna view the issue, we're gonna view, view the comments, right? And so we have response from LS command that is coming from RC2. The bidirectional hooks, uh, we're spawning on a, uh, spawning off a uh, real-time management thread that is gonna listen in the processor uh, of Octahook, uh, there's, a, there's a web server that can come up to listen to the uh, webhook coming in. And because it's a broadcast to any of the webhooks that uh, are registered on GitHub, the response goes to everyone. So once we do RTM, 
We're going to execute ls again, and we should get a response, right? Real time. So essentially, the broadcast goes to both sides: the client on the inside and the um, the C2. Just a little note on uh, some of the. Uh, uh, sorry. Okay. So really quick. Um, this um, this octahook is uh, is uh, is hosted on GitHub, right? <laughs> and uh, so you guys can pull it, uh, play with it, and uh, the um, the slides are going to be uh, posted. Um, Soon. So, uh, one little thing that I wanted to mention is that uh, what we're doing right now, we are creating a file um, on the uh, on the C2, and we're going to try to bring that file back to the client by executing a put of this uh, of this file to the GitHub, and then um, we're going to see how that's done. So, really quick, this is her. Anyway, so uh, last but not least, uh, what can you do about that? Um, you really need to understand uh, what GitHub is used for your purposes on the inside and restrict access to um, repositories that you are not um, you're not working with uh, on the inside. If you guys have any questions, uh, I'll be outside. Please ask. This is the Octahook, Octahook uh, GitHub repository. Please fork or work with it. Thank you so much.